In today's video, we are going to be turning the scrap material from my fish room build into this beautiful better rack with a recirculating water system. As part of my new fish room build, it was essential that I had a system for the betters to be supplied in the shop. We're going to build like a big better rack over here. Now a lot of shops just keep their betters simply in jars, and this just was something that I didn't want to do. There's a lot of expensive options out there online for better systems, especially for shops and for commercial use. And for me, it just wasn't worth spending this much money on one of these systems. They are about a thousand bucks. And this project did end up being expensive because of how many betters are in the system. But the ones that we can find online only house about 20 betters at a time. And I really wanted to have a range of about 50 betters in my shop. Dave, what are we building here? Oh, I know. <laughs> Farting fish cover. Oh, that's a, yeah, I'm making a YouTube. Yeah, you're fighting for sure. To help us with this build, I got Dave and Quentin to come back in and give me a hand with building the frame for the better stand. We start off by getting these plywood pieces and measuring them to size against the wall and then cutting them down. Next up, it was time to cut up the pieces of wood that we had spare from the construction. So. These were actually covering up some of the concaves in the floor from when we originally got the room. There's just these wood boards covering up the floor. Since then we filled these up with concrete but we still had the pieces of wood covering up the concaves and we decided that we'd use these for the shelves as the pieces of wood were really thick and would definitely be able to hold the weight of all the water. Like a video of being starting it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that how you start it? You can see here that Quentin's saw doesn't work properly at the moment. This is because of an electrical surge and it actually blew the insides of the saw. So we cut off all the bad corners of these pieces of wood and then cut them down to size to make the shelves for the stand. See safety glasses on, even on this. Safety first. <laughs> Too late to take <laughs> we then assembled the cut pieces of wood on the floor and secured the frame with some screws. This is an awesome way to use up that wood though. After this we attached the plywood sheets to the back to finish the creation of the stand. Oh, yeah, put it on. Can you change the dimensions or something? So now that the frame of the stand is done, which was the easy bit, it was time to start doing some of the plumbing and linking up the lights and all that kind of stuff to make the system actually work. So this definitely is the trickiest part to do and to try and get right. So for an amateur like me, I did find this quite tricky and it did take up quite a few days of doing a lot of work, but nonetheless, it's still part of the job and it was really fun to do. So. If you guys want to do this at home, you can either make your own stand, you can buy stuff online, you can buy all types of different shelves, it'll definitely work. I just wanted to create a stand out of the scrap wood instead of wasting it and obviously saving the cost. You can see here I'm screwing some pieces of wood onto the frame and I actually changed these for some bigger pieces of wood and you might be wondering why I'm doing this. This is because here in Australia at the hardware store, they only sell PVC in lengths of 3 meters and the length of this stand was actually 1.6 meters. So I needed to make the difference up so I didn't have to buy extra PVC for no reason. And this is why I added these extra pieces of wood here. You can also see here me experimenting with how the system was going to work. So I made a little module of a better tank and you can see I was measuring out where I was going to put my drainage pipes. I then screwed in some of these brackets to hold the PVC pipe that I found at the hardware store to hold it the right distance away from the plywood wall to create the drainage system. Then it was time to start gluing all the bits and bobs together to try and get this drainage system to work. After this I started drilling the holes in the back of the plywood where the outlet for the better container would go through into the drainage pipe. This is something that if you're doing in your better system you do not want to screw up because you've only got one sheet of plywood and if you put a hole in the wrong spot, you won't be able to fix it. So the reason I have this sheet of plywood in front of all the drainage pipes is to hide the drains and to give it like an invisible effect of there's only containers here and only fish here. I didn't want the pipes to distract from the looks of the fish. Once I had an idea of how the drainage would work, I then finished up gluing all the PVC together and using brackets to hold it in place.
Once the drains are in place, it was time to drill all the rest of the holes and this just took forever. So the reason I'm drilling two holes instead of one is because the bottom hole is for where the tank outlet's actually gonna go and the top hole just allows you to pivot it out and remove it from the drainage system. So if I just had the one hole, it'd be permanently stuck in there, but the top hole allows me to just pivot it in and makes it a whole lot easier to see into the back as well. And this is still hidden by the top of the container and was the easiest way to do this. Much later. I then marked out and drilled all the holes in the PVC pipe for the drain. This also took ages as well. Doing something like this does take a lot of experimenting. The holes in the back of the plywood are 50 mil and the holes in the drain are 35. Much, much later. After I was done drilling all the holes, it was time to give the back plywood a sand. So I sanded this down because I didn't want to paint the plywood, I just wanted to stain it to try and match the room as best I could. So I sanded it down before I gave it a coat of varnish. After sanding the stand down, it was time to paint it. So you can see me and Sarah here working away at the painting. We thought we were going to paint the outside white, but we ended up painting the outside actually black. So this just acted as a priming layer, but this did take a long, long time. And we decided to paint the whole thing black because all the tanks in the room were black and the wood was in a really rough state. So it does look very rustic, but the black does help to kind of cover up the floors and the little like scratches and stuff in the wood. And it actually ended up looking really good. So you can see we painted everything except for the wood sheet at the back black and we found this to be the best way to design it. This isn't too important though. I then gave the back piece of plywood two coats with cabothane. I probably could have used a nicer stain but the cabothane really seals it, helps it become waterproof and it gives it a really nice wet look. It's really important when building something like this to work on your drainage first as this is something that you really don't want to screw up. In my last fish room I screwed up the drainage and I had to redo the whole thing and it's just a massive pain in the ass and it costs a lot of money. So one thing I learned from doing that is to always do the drainage first and you can see here that we have the drainage all done, the stands all painted and now we can start working on trying to get some water into these containers. To get the water into these containers, I'm going to use the same materials that I use for my automatic water changing system, which is just basic irrigation supplies. Now, these aren't the best materials to use for things like this. They're not as stable as using PVC and things like that, but they're cheap and they're really easy to set up and they last for a very long time. This isn't a system I'm going to have for a very, very, very long time. It might only run for a few years and it's going to be a lot better than just keeping betters in containers without any water changing system. So, I don't mind using this stuff, it's black and it matches the stand and looks discreet enough. So I'd call basically setting up this stuff just glorified Lego. It's not too tricky, you need to play around with it a little bit and then you get the hang of it. You will get drips and leaks in certain places, so it is important you try and make sure they're not in crucial parts and they're not going to leak all over the floor or ruin your wood or anything like that. But I just linked it all together and it wasn't too tricky. To make this system recirculating we did need a sump. And I was going to use a glass aquarium, but I decided to use two of these buckets, which I think are like 10 litres. They're not going to hold a crazy amount of water, but they are cheap and we're going to use two buckets, one for filter material, and then it's going to overflow into the second bucket that's going to have the pump in it. I could have just done this all in one bucket, but I used two because it was going to increase the water volume of the whole entire better system. And it just makes it really, really easy to clean. So you can see I'm drilling a hole into this cabinet because this is my checkout area and I decided I was going to hide it underneath the checkout and it kind of just fit in here really well. To light up the better system, I found some old LED light strips that I didn't use for my last fish room in my storage and I thought they'd be a really good option to use for this system as we don't need a huge amount of light, I don't want to stress the betters out too much but we can change the colours on the lights and they were free, I already had them sitting around. The adhesive wasn't too good so I did have to go around with a bit of silicon afterwards and stick it to the top. It's not super bright but I think it would work really well in a dark room since this room is so light, it's just mostly there for aesthetic features. I might need to upgrade this later, but for the moment in time it'll work. We also found a cool feature on the app for the lights where it reacts to sound, so we thought we'd give it a spin with some EDM. Now that the skeleton of the better system was done, it was time to make the heart and the nucleus of the whole entire system, which was the sump. So, I did actually screw this up, and this is what I mean when I say setting up these systems isn't the easiest. The only thing I screwed up was the sizing of the tank outlet. 
wasn't big enough to pass water into the second bucket, so I did upgrade this at a later date, but you can see how I set it up. Basically, water drains into the back pipe and then flows into the first bucket, where we'll have some volcanic rock to act as biological filter media. The water will then pass through this media and go into the second bucket through the tank outlet, where we have our water pump, and then it'll be returned back into the top with our irrigation system. And it'll just keep doing this over and over, creating a cycle of water through the whole system. So all the bedders will be on the exact same water, which isn't the best for quarantine, but it's really, really good because it's gonna keep the water really fresh, recirculating, and we can also give them all meds and salt and all that kind of stuff, and it works out really nice. After this was all done, I went around and attached all the little taps. I then went ahead and attached all the little inlets for the tanks in the irrigation system. For the containers for the better racks, we use these Kmart containers. I think these are four bucks each and they hold a litre of water. And they worked out to be a really good size for the system and a really cheap option and something easy for you guys to use at home. We also went and painted all the backs and sides of these black to match the whole entire rack. I then put a 15mm tank outlet in the back with one of these BSP elbows. I'm not too sure what else to call them, they're like a BSP tank outlet elbow. Go and look in your irrigation aisle, that's where I found these, but go around to the plumbing supply section and the irrigation section in your hardware store and have a look for yourself and see what you can find there. Just try and use as few materials as possible to make it work and that's how you save money. For this we only needed two a tank outlet which was $3.50 and this BSP elbow which I think was like a dollar. After this was all done I turned it on and gave it a quick test and I did discover a few flaws in it so I had to go around and tighten up a few of the sprinkler heads that I attached to the irrigation systems outlets and I also did have to fix the sump problem because we weren't getting enough flow from the first bucket into the second bucket because that tank outlet was too small so I did make that adjustment and then we had the better system working really really well. Okay, and so here we are with the completed better rack. Now, there is a few little minor tweaks and things that I still have to do with the system to get it working perfectly before I add fish. So, I still haven't added any of the filter media to the buckets, and I also haven't added the second bucket yet. So it's currently running off one bucket, but you can see that it's working perfectly fine. There are leaks and little, you know, things here that I have to fix, like a few of these are dripping up the top, which I don't mind too much because they just drip straight down into the container anyways and some of these bulkheads as well are leaking so I just need to put some Teflon on those and you get the point. So there's just little tweaks and stuff that I have to do. I did run a little bead of silicon along the inside of each of these shelves which is not worth really looking at but I'm just letting you guys know I did that because lots of water was falling on these shelves just with me moving them and stuff like that and I didn't want that water getting behind and starting to swell all that wood that we just cut up. So that's good. The system ended up being quite expensive to make and it did take quite a few days, but compared to another system, it still was cheaper in the end. The good thing about this system is it's like customized. So I do have quite a lot of containers for a cheap price. Well, relatively cheap. I've got a little breakdown of the costs here for you guys to look at. So for all the plumbing parts, I think I spent about $500. So that's for like the drainage, the inlets and all that kind of stuff. Like everything was about 500 bucks. I spent $130 on a pump. I spent 250 bucks on getting the cupboard made. This might be a little bit more, this might be a little bit less. I spent 70 bucks on the LED lights and then I spent $220 on containers. So in total, the whole project cost me about $1,170 and now I can keep 52 beautiful bedders in the best conditions possible now. Was this project worth it? I'd say yes, because not everyone's gonna be able to buy one of those commercial units. And it does set me out from the crowd with having like my own system it just looks a little bit different. It looks homemade and in my opinion, I like the look. I know some people are gonna be like, oh, it doesn't look that great. Like it doesn't look professional, <laughs> whatever. This whole fish room kind of looks really homemade at this point and that's just the thing I'm sticking with. So I probably am gonna to have to build another system like this for out the back, which is gonna be a little bit less pretty, but a lot more easier to make. And we probably will be making a video on that 
but this better rack is literally just going to be used for betters in the shop. I'm not going to be using this for growing out any like male betters that I want to see their full colors come out. Like this isn't for that. This is just for putting betters in for you guys to come in and buy in the shop and you know, look at. Something important here too is you'll notice that these containers don't have lids. Now, the containers did come with lids. I decided not to include them because they were white and they kind of looked a bit weird and they did look really, really homemade when I had the white lids on. I don't think that the betters are gonna be able to jump over this lip. They might be able to, and if this does become a problem, I will be adding some kind of lids to the containers, but I don't think for the moment in time it's gonna be an issue. The other thing too is lighting. It is very, very weak lighting, and that's probably because I've used cheap LED lights. I think what I might do is add some kind of lighting behind here to try and brighten it up if we really can't see the fish, but I don't know how good this lighting is going to be until I add some fish to the system. So anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys found it informational and entertaining, and I'll see you guys in the next one.